straightforward question. She asked, how did you get so strong? This question surprised me because normally my mom would ask me something like, why are you so stubborn or why are you such a meanin? And yes, I said meanin. That is the word my parents use instead of mean because normal words are apparently not their style. However, the question my mom asked made me think about why people possess certain characteristics. Looking at my friends, they are all very different. For example, Sarah Galliano freaks out if she is not five minutes early to every class. Well, Nadine and Kendall often sleep through at least part of their first class in the morning. <laughs> Mary Hahn has a habit of abusing her friends, which she claims is out of love, while Anne, Caroline, and Susanna are always ready with a hug. And Claire, well, let's just say she's in her own kind of category. <laughs> she's not exactly an easy person to explain. So what creates these differences in individuals? There may be many answers to this question, but my opinion is that your childhood experiences and the people in your life are really what shape you. People are not just born with the characteristics that will define them. The first line of the movie Black Beauty is, quote, the story of my life is the story of the people in it, end quote. I think this statement is true for everyone, but I know this is de definitely the case for me. Since I was born, both of my parents have worked at High Hampton Inn and Country Club. Located in the beautiful mountains of Cashers, North Carolina, High Hampton has been in my family since 1922, passed down from my great-grandfather to, great, to my grandfather and now to my father. My sister Rebecca and I have lived in the same house, located on High Hampton property, our whole lives. You can imagine that growing up at a resort owned by our father made our childhood a little bit different. During the end season, which lasts from April to November, my parents work at the end during the day and often have to go out to visit with homeowners at night. Although my mom did not work full time when we were little, Rebecca and I were often taken care of by employees of the inn. Our Nana was working at the inn before both Rebecca and I were born. <coughs> Nana, who is not, actually not blood related to us, has helped raise Rebecca and me. She's like a grandmother to us. Although her family is very different from ours, and she has numerous grandchildren and great-grandchildren of her own, she has always treated Rebecca and me like her own family. Anna has also taught me some of my most valuable life lessons without even knowing that she was having a large effect on me. She is one of the people I admire most in my life. Daphne is another employee of the inn that has been a large part of my life. She began working at the inn when I was a baby and then specifically helping my parents when I was a toddler. Since I was so little when she started working for my family, I cannot remember a time when Daphne has not been around. When we were younger, she took care of Rebecca and me a lot in the afternoons after school and during the summertime. She also did her best to keep Rebecca and me from tearing each other's throats out. You wouldn't know it now, but Rebecca and I did not exactly get along when we were little, and Daphne had the horrifying stories to prove it. <laughs> after Rebecca left for Asheville school, I grew even closer to Daphne. I hated being the only child in the house, and she was always there to listen to me vent about my petty problems especially those involving my parents. <laughs> Daphne was also the first person to attempt to teach me how to drive. My parents were probably too scared to drive with me, or perhaps just knew better than to let me behind the wheel at the age of 14, but Daphne was patient with my complete lack of driving skills, and also very brave, considering the fact that I had already crashed multiple golf carts at that time. During the springs and summers of my childhood, I spent a lot of time at the inn. Since I was always surrounded by them, I didn't know what strangers were. I believed the combination of having different people take care of me and spending time around many guests I didn't know made me more independent than most kids my age. Unlike many toddlers, I did not suffer from separation anxiety when I was away from my parents. To put this in perspective, when I was in preschool and my mom would come to pick me up in the afternoons, instead of running to her in excitement, I would run to the furthest corner of the playground in an attempt to stay with my friends and teachers longer. As I grew older, however, my personality changed from outgoing and friendly to shy and introverted. I loved my family's end, but it became a somewhat difficult part of my life. I made friends with the kids staying at the end easily, and I formed relationships with many of the employees, but most people just came and went with each season. It was worse when they were around for several seasons and then never returned. I did not experience any serious losses as a child, but having many of the people present in my life constantly leaving affected my demeanor. Another problem the inn confronted me with was that many of the kids whose parents or grandparents owned a house at the inn, the ones who actually returned every summer, often avoided me like I was the black plague because I was the inn owner's daughter. 
They immediately assumed I was a snob and that I would get them in trouble if they did something wrong at the end. I always thought this situation was ironic because they were exactly what they assumed I was, spoiled. Unlike them, my family did not own multiple homes, and many of their homes were nicer than my only house. They also thought I would turn them in for borrowing a golf cart without permission. Like, I cared. As I mentioned before, I didn't simply borrow golf carts and return them on arm. I crashed them, even the ones that belonged to the inn. Since they steered, since they steered clear of me, however, the homeowner kids couldn't have possibly known anything about me. So they treated me like an outsider. The same tend to apply to the many of the newer, younger employees. I suppose I lost the cuteness that children not yet in the double digits often possess, and they too jumped to the belief that I was a brat. Gradually, I lost my confidence with strangers. I started to feel more comfortable talking to old people than to kids my own age. I resented my parents for owning the inn and thus separating me from all the other kids. I realize now that this bitterness towards my parents was ridiculous. However, I also resented the inn for taking my parents away from me. During the summers, my parents were gone a lot of the time due to their obligations to the inn and its guests. <coughs> my parents did not, by any means, neglect me as a child. In fact, I credit my parents for the strength that I have today. When I used to complain that they were always at the inn or at a party, they would reply, this is our job. They understood how I was feeling, but they knew better than to coddle me. I was the one who chose to stay at home all day by myself, and only I could change that. In the quote Rebecca read, Beatrix Potter says, quote, The place has changed now, and many familiar faces are gone, but the greatest change is myself. I was a child then. I had no idea what the world would be like. I wished to trust myself on the waters and the sea. Everything was romantic in my imagination, end quote. Although the end has changed a lot over the years, I believe I have changed more. The end has confronted me with an impermanence of many of the people in my life, an unprovoked division between my peers and myself, and mild separation from my parents. These challenges have made me the self-reliant person I am today. My stage of hostility towards my home and parents was necessary for my transformation, and I no longer resent anything or anyone from my childhood. I love the end again, as I know it has blessed me with a unique and wonderful childhood as well as some of the people I love most in my life, like Nana and Daphne, whom I never would have met without the end. Now, when I am confronted with personal difficulties, I try to face them with resilience. When my mom witnessed this, she asked the question, how did you get so strong? Now, Mom, you have your answer.